Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish here at the Libertarian National Convention 2018 in New Orleans. I am joined by my friend Andy Jacobs, longtime Libertarian Party activist, longtime signature gatherer. The get those signatures in the rain, no pain, no gain. He's that libertarian and someone whose opinion of the party I have a lot of respect for. So, Andy, we had a how, how many how many national conventions have you been to now? Uh, well, let me see. I went to Anaheim in 2000. I went to um, Denver 2008, um, 2010 in St. Louis, Missouri. 2012 in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, 2014 in Columbus, Ohio, 2016 in Orlando, and then this one, 2018 in New Orleans. So that's seven. So you're getting a little more consistent over time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I was in the party for four years before I went to my first national convention. And uh, then I didn't go for a long time, and then I've been going to everyone since Denver. So just for background, how did you wake up and become a libertarian? Um, well, you know, um, my uh, my mother and and my grandmother and and I had an aunt that were Democrats and you know my father kind of voted just you know whichever way, and um, you know before I was going to start voting, um, I wanted to start looking into politics myself. So I, I at one point I was actually going to be a Democrat, and then I started looking into the Democrats and I kind of realized that uh, I didn't really agree with them. So then I, I briefly looked into the Republicans. I already kind of had a bias against them just from hearing negative comments about Republicans for a long time. And uh, anyway, it didn't take me long to realize that, you know, they were just as full of it as the Democrats were. And so then, um, I w this is going back in the 90s, I was going to vote for Ross Perot. And I, until it was July 4th weekend, 1996. And I was young back then. I got involved with this at a young age. And I was flipping through the channels, and I happened to turn on C-SPAN. I didn't typically watch C-SPAN, but there was something going on in the background that was very interesting. And so I started listening, and I looked at the bottom of the screen. It said Libertarian Party National Convention, and a guy named Harry Brown was speaking. And I was like, wow, this is like really good. Now, I had already started coming to a lot of Libertarian conclusions on my own. Uh, but I didn't know everything, and I didn't put the pieces together. Now, anyway, rewind back to 1988. I was a kid in school, and a teacher taped a sample ballot to the chalkboard. And I was like the only kid in class that got up and looked at it, and I remember seeing this guy with two first names on the ballot named Ron Paul. And I, I remembered the name because I thought it was a weird name, and I saw this party that had an L next to it, but I didn't know what it was. I so that was, was like, the original seed. Yeah, yeah. Ron Paul, 1988. Yeah, yeah. Ron, I just saw it on a Andre Maru and Ron Paul, yes. 1988, Libertarian but Party ticket. Any, but I didn't know anything about them. And uh, I thought it was like the Liberal Party or the Liberation Party. Well, now fast forward back to 1996. I said, wait a minute. This is that party that I saw on the ballot in 1988. This is what it stood for? Well, I wish somebody would have explained it to me back then because I would have joined. I, I mean, I don't know if you could join as a kid, but if you could have, if somebody would have explained it to me, I would have. Anyway, I joined. I, there was a guy that I worked with at the time who was a disgruntled Republican. And um, I brought, because I, 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 I recorded it on a VHS tape. I was so interested by what was going on on the TV when I saw the Libertarian National Convention that I brought the tape in to the place I was working at the time. And I talked to this friend of mine who was really mad about Bob Dole getting the Republican nomination. Hey, you got to check out this Harry Brown and Libertarian Party thing. So he went and watched it. And he came back to work the next day, and he was blown away by it, too. So we both went to a pay phone, remember those, and uh, we dialed the 800 number. And we both Man, you're old. Yeah, pay we, phones? We got, we got, we got uh, information. Well, I was young back then, too. I was very young. So, uh, and and uh, we, we both uh, called the 800 number. We got information packets in the mail, and, and I joined the, we both joined the party, and you know, I've been involved uh, ever since. And so uh, I, didn't, I started petitioning in 2000. So I joined the party in 96. I was a member for four years. And um, I had been living in, in uh, Pennsylvania. I moved out of the state, and then I, I ended up moving to California. And um, this was in 2000. They had the 2000 National Convention in Anaheim. Now, a few weeks before that, um, I had got an email in the mail. Uh, in, in my email, this was back around May um, of 2000, where they said that they were hiring uh, or that they needed to raise money to pay their super petitioners in Oklahoma. And, you know, I knew that there were petitions, but I didn't know you could get paid to collect signatures. And I thought, ah, oh, well, that sounds like it'd be a cool job. I wonder how you get into that, you know. And then um, I didn't follow up on it, though. Then several weeks later, I went to the National Convention in Anaheim, California. And then after the National Convention in Anaheim, California, I got another email from the Libertarian National Party. And it said they were hiring petitioners in various states. And uh, one of them was Pennsylvania. Another one was Maryland. Another one was Washington, D.C. And so I had family in that area. 
and I was going to go visit them anyway, so I thought, okay, I can go visit family, I can uh, work and make some money, and I can do something for the Libertarian Party at the same time. So I petitioned in, in uh, Pennsylvania, petitioned in Maryland, then I was going to go petition in D.C., but I, um, um, uh, they, they had an emergency in, in Arizona. And so the Libertarian Party flew me out to Arizona, so I ended up going to Arizona instead of uh, D.C. I told you he was that Libertarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Andy, yeah. just to get to this convention here, did, yes. it, we had over 800 delegates. Mm -hmm. 2014, the last year that uh, we didn't have a presidential nomination at the convention, we only had about 400. Mm -hmm. That's freaking phenomenal that's really exciting what do, you, what do you think about that growth of the party base um that's good that it's a sign of progress but i mean overall when i got involved in the party back in the 90s the party was growing and back around 96 the party had around 14,000 or so dues paying members and between 96 and 2000 or 2001 it went from 14,000 something 15,000 up to 33,000 and dues paying membership started going down after that and it hasn't recovered since then. Now I know during the 2016 presidential election, it went up to uh, 20,000, but then the year after the presidential election, 2017, it went down to 14,500. So I think right now LP dues paying membership is, is fluctuating in the 14 or 15,000 range. He's also that keeping track of the numbers libertarian. Yeah, yeah, and another sign of, uh, um, again, the word libertarian, has gotten more popular than it's ever been and there's more people self-identifying as libertarian right now than there has ever been but um sadly it hasn't really translated into growth for the libertarian party like it should have now uh, i got heavily involved in the ron paul campaign as you did you and in fact that's when i first heard about you was with the ron paul campaign back 2007 2008 and uh anyway um uh, I worked on the Ron Paul campaign. I collected signatures for Ron Paul. I canvassed for Ron Paul. In fact, I helped get four Ron Paul delegates elected in Pennsylvania uh, out of a congressional district, and it was the most Ron Paul delegates elected out of any one district in Pennsylvania. He elected 16, and four of them came from this district that I personally uh, canvassed. But uh, anyway, um, I feel like the party hasn't grown as much as it should have. Now, here's another example. Uh, the Libertarian Party back in 2003 had over 600 people elected to office. Today it's got what, maybe somewhere between 179, 180, maybe 200. So we've actually gone down in terms of number of elected libertarians. Now right now the Libertarian Party has four people in, the, in state legislators, legislatures. Three in New Hampshire and one in Nebraska. But the bad thing is none of them were elected as libertarians. Now, they, they, that means they all switch parties while in office. And the Libertarian Party has a very interesting, very important challenge in front of us right now to show that you can do this and get reelected. This is a huge battle line that has been drawn and and we might we might lose, we might fail, but our four uh, elected state legislators, our party is very, very intent on standing behind them and making sure that they get reelected. And I know I know at least two of them were at this convention. But uh, uh, shout out to Laura Ebke of Nebraska and Brandon Finney of New Hampshire. Thank you very much for joining the Libertarian Party. And, and Caleb Dyer, is that his name? I believe he was yes. here as well. Yes, yes. But uh, any, anyway, um, going back into the 90s, the Libertarian Party elected, like, had four people in the New Hampshire state legislature at one time that were elected as Libertarians. And then in 1980, 1998, they elected somebody else to the uh, legislature in New Hampshire and who served a two-year term. And then in Vermont in 2000, they elected somebody to the state legislature. Un but unfortunately, that person switched to Republican a few months into their term. So I don't, I don't want to get, I, oh, we okay. got, see like, I, I, okay, so, so too much on the trivia. Andy and I could talk about the history of the Libertarian Party for hours and we get our phones, but I want to, I want to get a little more about what you think about what happened here this weekend. Um, there was some interesting things that happened, you know, some of them good, some of them bad, some of them were still waiting on results to see what happened and you know, who gets elected on the LNC. But I'll tell you one cool thing that happened this weekend. Full disclosure right now, Andy is a candidate for the LNC and we adjourned without hearing the vote results so he is like nervously awaiting yeah. the, these these numbers to come out oh they just oh, don't show him until no, the oh no see now he's got to wrap up well, no, no, so we'll no he's gonna he's uh, that's gonna keep him from uh from taking making this interview take too long because no, he knows okay. the numbers are sitting right no, there all okay. right so that's andy okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. so but back to this weekend what, what was your favorite thing that you saw this weekend uh, well the favorite thing i saw this weekend was like 800 libertarians getting together and having some fun 
you know what I mean, socializing, and uh, there are some disagreements and there were some arguments, but for the most part, people were cool, and I had some very fun, interesting conversations. I got to meet some interesting people, like one of them's over there, TJ Roberts. I'd seen him online, and you know, I'd never met him before, and I got to talk to Adam Kokesh again, and Adam Kokesh is- You're not sick of me yet? I've met him several times, but yeah, and I got to meet some other cool and interesting people uh, this weekend, some people that I've only met online. And so uh, I, I've also uh, interviewed Arvin Vora. I had a really cool interview with Arvin Vora that's going to be posted to my YouTube channel, Libertarian Revolution. So check out Libertarian Revolution. Uh, and uh, I've talked to some other people. I might be doing some other interviews. And I also got interviewed by Roger Roots uh, for his YouTube channel. So uh, anyway, overall, it was, it was a cool weekend. We had some fun. And uh, I guess remains to be seen, you know, what's happened with the election results. But uh, I'm hoping that we will move further to a bigger and better uh, Libertarian Party and more principled Libertarian Party. Because without the principles, we might as well just go join the Democrats and Republicans and be establishment, you know, work, uh, and go for the political establishment. Because without the principles, the Libertarian Party might as well not even exist. All right, so I want to throw you a real softball at the end here, Andy. Why should people join the Libertarian Party? Uh, they should join the Libertarian Party if they believe in freedom. If you believe in more individual freedom across the board on both civil liberties and economic issues, um, if you support what we, we call the non-aggression principle, that is that you have the right to live your life as a free individual just as long as you are not infringing on the rights of others through forms of violence, theft, or destruction of property. So the very heart and soul of libertarianism is the non-aggression principle and property rights. And if you are down with those principles and you don't like being a, a, a slave or controlled by other people and you're not a control freak who seeks to control other people or enslave other people, then come on down to the Libertarian Party. We're your home. I want to turn to the hype and be like, yeah, 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 what he said. Andy, anything else you want to plug today? Um, that's about it. I mean, uh, check Libertarian out. Libertarian Revolution. Yes, and check out Adam Kokesh for president, or is it Adam Kokesh for not Just, just kokeshforpresident.com. That's check a great reverse Kokesh. plug. Thank yeah, you, Andy. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. Take care. <laughs> Thanks, brother. All right. <laughs> all right.